Hello everybody, what's up? It's USA Patriot, aka the Mighty Messenger from the Lord Yeshua, the Messiah. Um, today I would like to go over a book of Romans chapter 7. It's uh, no longer bound to the law. So first always, Heavenly Father, come to you in prayer through the Spirit. And I ask you, Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name, to forgive us of all our sins, known and unknown. And I ask you, Heavenly Father, to grant us your wisdom and your understanding through the Holy Spirit of this truth, this knowledge, this wisdom by the great Apostle Paul who is the doctrine of the sons of God and I ask you Heavenly Father for the guidance to read this like it was living water which it is. And also, Heavenly Father, I ask you to bless those so we can bless others. And Heavenly Father, I just want to lift you, lift up your name. You are the Alpha. You are the Omega. You are the all-consuming fire. You are the great I Am. You are my rock. You are the God in whom I trust. You said no weapon formed against us shall prosper. Thank you. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for every promise in Lord Jesus is yes, and in Lord Jesus, amen. And in Jesus' name we pray, amen. Now, dear brothers and sisters, you who are familiar with the law, don't you know that the law applies only while a person is living? For example, when a woman marries, the law binds her to her husband as long as he is alive. But if he dies, the law of marriage no longer applies to her. So, while her husband is alive, she would be committing adultery if she married another man. But if her husband dies, she is free from that law and does not commit adultery when she remarries. So, my dear brothers and sisters, this is the point. You died to the power of the law when you died with Christ. And for those of you who don't know what that means, my dear brothers and sisters, this is the point. You died to the power of the law, being the Old Testament, being that you had to sacrifice things in order to gain the Lord's forgiveness and grant you your um, place with Him. And have, and you know, him not take you out. <laughs> and so that's what that means. And now you are united with the one who has, who was raised from the dead. Again, now we are united with the one who was raised from the dead. As a result, we can produce a harvest of good deeds for good. Good deeds for God. As a result, we can produce a harvest of good deeds for God. When we were controlled by the old nature of the flesh, sinful desires were at work within us. And the law aroused these evil desires that produced a harvest of sinful deeds resulting in death. But now, 
we have been released from the law, for we died to it and are no longer captive to its power. Now we can serve God, not in the old way of obeying the letter of the law, meaning the words in the Old Testament, but in the new way of living in the Spirit. Now, that does not give us a right, like I said before, to run out and commit adultery, run out and go, oh, let's go to the club and smoke fat one and do this, well, whatever, okay. I believe that smoking pot, if you are prescribed the medication, there's absolutely nothing wrong with it whatsoever especially if it's a God-given seed-bearing plant as long as that medicine does not take you out of your clear undrunken state of mind because in the Bible they don't talk about um, say marijuana, and they don't talk about um, other kinds of medications as well. And so there are parts in the Word of God where it does talk about medications and things like Big Pharma, Big Harma. Now, all things are possible in Christ Jesus. All things. But you must find your truth. You must be you must find your truth. You must be you must find the Father and you must find you must find it. Only the ones that know what I'm talking about will understand this. And that's very, very few. And maybe none. I don't know if I have one subscriber that would understand this. But just remember one thing. Love covers a multitude of sin. So we must love one another as unconditionally as it takes to love. So I was reading in this book that um, how to become a uh, like go on a walk with God. Well I walked with God for one whole year straight every single day almost for every hour of the day just about I was I I kind of if you want to say it like it is I abandoned my family I abandoned I abandoned everything for God because I was lost and I, God gave me purpose in my life. And during that time, yes, of course, I was sinning during that time. And that's why um, you have to understand that we shall not judge anybody. Because why shall I judge you? Because I don't. If I'm going to judge you, then who? I why would I judge you? Why would I judge you for any reason whatsoever? I don't want to be judged, so why would I judge you? Right? I don't want to judge. I don't want to be judged, so I'm not going to judge nobody. I'm not going to say nothing to nobody except I'm going to lift them up and tell them good things. And 
if there's something that I feel like that brother has on his mind, I'm going to say, hey, brother, what's on your mind? Come here, let's talk. If you want to, if not, it's okay. When you're ready, we can talk about it, sister, whenever. Just know that I'm there for you. And that's the way I feel God, our Lord Jesus, is with us. And um, as long as we strive and we talk to our God and we get to know our God, truthfully know our God, and be put through tests, because mm-hmm. I truly believe that every day is a test. Some days, in some weeks, maybe. Like right now, I've been down. I've been down and I'm not used to feeling down. And um, I'm used to feeling full of joy, full of energy, and just rocking and rolling and on fire for God. And I'm on fire for God. But... Somewhere is my joy missing, and I kind of have an idea of what it is, but it, I, I truly believe it's because of the things that I know, and because of the things that are going on and thinking about our family members and thinking about what's going to happen in the next couple of years to them or us, especially us. Um, That can kind of take your joy away. So it's it's trusting in God with all your heart, having hope, love, and what's the other one? Hope, love, and faith. faith. Having hope, love, and faith are the three most important things. And an angel just told me yes as it struck three o'clock on the dot. So don't get it twisted about the times that we're in. It's right in front of your face, the times that we're in. It's all over the TV. It's all over the... It's all in the stores, it's it's all over the place. I can't just go out and tell you these things because you have to find them for yourself. Because I may be a messenger of God, but I ain't no snitch. <laughs> Um, You ever heard of the saying, snitches get put in ditches, so I'm not getting put in no ditch, because I love my family and I love my life, and yes, I will die for my Lord and Savior, but um, that I am not in no hurry for that day to come. I am in a hurry for Him to come, but I'm not in a hurry for that day to come. It's kind of a weird thing to say, but... I wish he would come before that day would come, if you know what I mean. So, that's the truth, and I live in it. And anybody has any question that they ever wanted to ask me, personal questions, anything, feel free to ask me, and I will tell you the truth, I promise. And, um, so, spec. Let me get back to this. So, my dear brothers and sisters, this is the point. You died to the power of the law when you died with Christ, and now you are united with the one who was raised from the dead. As a result, we can produce a harvest of good deeds for God. 
When we were controlled by our old nature, sinful desires were at work within us, and the law aroused these evil desires that produced a harvest of sinful deeds, resulting in death. But now we have been released from the law, for we died to it and are no longer captive to its power. Now we can serve God, not in the old way of obeying the letter of the law, but in the new way of living in the Spirit. The Spirit is in the mind. That is the Spirit. Your mind is your Spirit. Your spirit is your, your thoughts. Renewing of the mind is renewing of the spirit. You know, you have all that power and energy that's up there. And I am learning that there is a lot of good things that come along with meditation. And and Christ Jesus as well as the Word of God. It's all, there There it is. I mean, it's these things, they all mix together to form a very powerful source. And these are the things that um, you must learn on your own. I, I will not give these secrets away. These secrets are um, in the Holy Gospel. And if you have eyes to see and ears to hear, and you pray for the right things, it will be given to you. That's a promise. So, well then, am I suggesting that the law of God is sinful? Of course not. In fact, it was the law that showed me my sin. I would never have known that coveting was, is wrong if the law had not said, you must not covet. But sin used this command to arouse all kinds of covetous desires within me. If there were no law, sin would not have that power. At one time, I lived without understanding the law. But when I learned the command not to go vet, for instance, the power of sin came to life. Understand how powerful that is. Understand how powerful that is. At one time I lived without understanding the law. But when I learned the command not to go vet, for instance, the power of sin came to life. The power of sin came to life. Do you understand? The power of sin came to came to life. Let's not let anything come to life and become sin. So that's one tip that I will give you. It's your birthday. That's one tip I'm going to give you. If you can figure that out and learn and meditate on that, all things are possible in Christ Jesus. But may every man be a liar but God. So. Amen. Praise Jesus. For his word is the truth, the way, and the life. And, and I died. So I discovered that the law's commands, which were supposed to bring life, brought spiritual death instead. Sin took advantage of those commands and deceived me. See that? Sin took advantage of those commands and deceived me. 
it used the commands to kill me. Got it? You were set up. You were deceived. It's all a setup. It's all a deception. It's used to kill me. It's used to deceive us. But still, the law itself is holy, and its commands are holy and right and good. But how can that be? Did the law which is good cause my death? Of course not. Sin used what was good to bring out my condemnation to death. So we can see how terrible sin really is. It, use, it uses God's good commands for its own evil purposes. See that? So we can see how terrible sin really is. It uses God's good commands for its own evil purposes. How Paul, that's why he's an apostle. <laughs> Struggling with sin? Absolutely, all the time. So, the trouble is not with the law, for it is spiritual and good. The trouble is with me, for I am all too human. I'm a slave to sin. I don't really understand myself. I really don't. For I want to do what is right, but I don't do it. I never do. Instead, I do what I hate. Which is sin. But if I know that what I am doing is wrong, that shows that I agree that the law is good. So I am not under that law anymore. So I am not the one doing wrong. It is sin living in me that does it. And I know that nothing good lives in me that is in my sinful nature. I want to do what is right, but I can't. I just can't do it. I try and I try and I try, but I can't do it. No matter what, I can't do it. I want to do what is good, but I don't. I don't want to do what is wrong, but I do it anyway. But if I do what I don't want to do, I am really the one doing wrong. It is sin living in me that does it. I have discovered the principle of life that when I want to do what is right, I inevitably do what is wrong. I love God's law with all my heart, but there is an other power, another power within me that is at war with my mind. That power makes me a slave to the sin that's still within me. Oh, what a miserable person I am, a wretched man I am. Who will free me from this life that is dominated by sin and death? Thank God. The answer is in Jesus Christ our Lord. So you see how it is. In my mind, I really want to obey God's law, but because of my sinful nature, I am a slave to sin. Jesus Christ, I love you. You always win. And I just added that in because... I hate the sin, 
but I'm sinful in nature. Paul, the apostle, Brother Josh, thank you for the teachings on the Apostle Paul. Um, if you want, you can email or send me a text with the links, and I'll put them in the description for people who want to really learn the doctrine before it's too late. But it's never too late. It's never too late to get saved. So I urge anybody that hasn't been saved after what you truly know what this means. And this isn't a channel you're just going to find easily. So when you do find this channel, I believe God put you there for a reason. And um, for that said, if you're not saved, get saved and allow Jesus to live inside you and do what he does best. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thou is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Sister Victoria Grace, Brother Miller, Sister Miller, um, Tara, everybody that I haven't talked to. Oh, my brother from another mother with the same father in Germany. Brother, tell your mother I says hi. And I love you all. I love you, my brother. And um, what I would like to do is for all of us, for brother from Kingdom of Yahweh, from brother from Germany, brother Josh, brother whoever wants to preach. This is this 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 is not just a. a a channel for me this is a channel for everyone this to anyone can make a video and say hey put this on your channel and vice versa I hope you know and um, because this this is getting I don't know but you guys do you guys know sister Ann Miller and brother Ronnie Miller they're very very wonderful people and they're having their land tore to pieces by some I don't know what, but we need to pray for them because they're they're wonderful people in the name of Jesus, and um, God bless their souls. God bless us all. I mean, truly. And s brother from Kingdom of Yahweh, um, brother, it, it's real. This stuff that's going on, <laughs> you know, just give me a give me a call. Um, on the number you've got or you what I'll do is I'll send you a text with um, uh, another number um, but I think you have all my numbers brother Josh you got my numbers um, things are starting to get strange but we're all covered by the blood and I would like to hear from anybody else because I know one of my brothers is um and sister she, they both um have been experiencing some of the very similar things that I have been experiencing and um I will not share that on this for a reason and um that reason will not be told here ever and that is between me God and my brothers and sisters if they are willing to have an ear to hear and I'm pretty sure they do so I love you all sister Victoria Grace I'm so glad to see you that you're making the videos again those were the same exact geese that were here 
And so that message that I truly believe is absolutely 100% truth that um, those were the exact same geese. They were here. They were here. So there's something to this, okay? All right, the Holy Ghost or something else. Something else that has nothing to do with, a, with the Holy Spirit, but it's like a false one. Okay, that's all I'm going to say. And, hey, that's just my opinion. That's just my opinion. I don't know nothing. I'm but a dummy. And so, that's just my opinion. It could be a false one. That I'm not going to say it. I'm not going to say it. So, let's just leave it at that. And um, I love you, and we'll go to chapter 8 tomorrow. God bless you all in the name of Jesus. And Dottie says she loves you. Little Lion of Judah <laughs> Jr., she says she loves you. Eileen, she's in her own world, and Bella said she loves you all, oh, God bless us, God bless you, pray for us as we pray for you all, I love you, and God bless.